So this time of year, you're going to have a lot of free and open source software projects start asking for donations during the holiday season. That's typically when a lot of us in the free and open source software community start giving a little to some of the projects that we depend on. For example, myself, there's several pieces of free and open source software that I use on a daily basis that I depend on to do the work that I do. Therefore, you know, every year when I'm trying to decide where I'm going to send some of my money as far as donation money during the holiday season. And I take a, a look at some of the pieces of software that I depend on, that I want to contribute to. I, I, I need these projects to keep going forward because again, I depend on them so much. I suggest all of you guys do that. Figure out what it is on your computer that's free and open source software that you depend on, that you couldn't live without and give a few bucks. And what reminded me that it was that time of year and I needed to spread this message of donating to your favorite open source projects is a few minutes ago, I came across this article over at makeuseof.com. The seven open source apps that are so good, I'd happily pay for them. I haven't read this article yet, but this is fantastic. I love seeing this when people start talking about their open source apps, the stuff that they depend on that are so good, you'd happily pay for them. And if you'd happily pay for them, again, it's that time of year, go ahead, make a donation. Now, quickly, I'm going to run through uh, some of his favorite open source apps because some of them may also be apps I'm familiar with. Some of them may not. Maybe uh, a, a good way to introduce me to some apps maybe that I'm not familiar with. Now the first of his seven open source apps is one I'm familiar with. The Zen Browser. I actually did a video about the Zen Browser a few months back. The Zen Browser is basically uh, like the Arc Browser. If you ever used Arc, which I never did because the Arc Browser was not available on Linux and I don't have any machines that run any Windows or Mac or anything. The Arc browser, I believe, was uh, originally for Mac, and it might have had a, a Windows port, but it definitely was not available on Linux, so I never got to try Arc. But the Zen browser is a free and open source alternative to, to the old Arc browser, and it is uh, it does have a native Linux client. And it's a pretty neat little browser. You got your sidebar. If, you, if you're like, if you're one of those people that like your browsers with like sidebar tabs and stuff like that instead of your traditional horizontal bar tabs. The Zen Browser is kind of a neat project. What is interesting about the Zen Browser also is that it's based on Firefox. So a lot of people, you know, don't like to be part of the Google Chrome monopoly. For me, I don't have much faith that Firefox has a, a much future left in it, that they've pretty much destroyed their browser. Mozilla as an organization has completely destroyed itself to the point where it's almost irrelevant these days. But if you're one of those those people that just for whatever reason you have to keep supporting Firefox or a Firefox based browser the Zen browser is good and you can see he's got a little summary here the OS uh, it's available on Windows Mac and Linux so it is cross-platform and the pricing model and you can see it's free and open source software which it is it's licensed under a free license now number two of his seven open source apps that he'd happily pay for now this is interesting Microsoft power toys so I am not familiar with this because this obviously is not a, a Linux program, right? It's a Windows program. So Power Toys uh, here in the article, you can see it's a collection of 25 small utilities that solve very specific and very real Windows problems that you didn't know you had until you see them. Well, I definitely didn't know I had any Windows problems because I'm not running uh, Windows, right? The great thing about being on Linux is I don't have to solve any of these very specific and very real Windows problems. I solve my Windows problems uh, many, many years ago. So that's great. Now, uh, is Microsoft Power Toys actually free and open source software? Now, these days, Microsoft does do a lot more with open source. A lot of their newer programs, and I'm assuming Power Toys is something newer because it's not something I'm familiar with. A lot of times these days, they are licensing everything they do under the MIT license. So I'm going to do a search for Microsoft Power Toys. We'll do a quick Google search. Here's the GitHub. Let's go ahead and search for the GitHub. And if I search for the license, MIT license. So it is licensed under the MIT license. Moving on to his number three free and open source app that he'd happily pay for is Fluent Search, which is another program I don't know anything about. Fluent Search, replace Windows Search without losing your mind. Uh, what the hell is Fluent Search? So once again, I'm going to do a quick search, Fluent Search. 
If I scroll down looking for the source code for Fluent Search, I'm assuming this is it. Uh, official repository of Fluent Search. So it's a search utility that is designed for Windows. So uh, Windows only software, which is fine. Uh, I, I won't fault anybody that is uh, on Windows and using like Windows only free and open source software. When I was a Windows user, even you know a couple of decades ago before I switched to Linux on Windows, I was using a lot of free and open source software and some of it was Windows only software. Uh, but I noticed this repository does not have a license. And typically, if you're not licensing things under a free license like the MIT or the Apache or the GPL, a lot of times these repos will not have any license here and that's uh, usually a hint that something is actually proprietary software so if I were to do a search or, or maybe just ask chat GPT let me actually <laughs> go over to chat GPT um, because we might actually get an uh, answer and some sources here so is fluent search open source and question mark Fluent Search, the Windows desktop search tool, is not open source. So that's what I was thinking. Yeah, again, usually that's a pretty good clue. If you go and you, you can't find a license on a GitHub page, then usually that piece of software is not going to be free software. Otherwise, they would have added that free license right there. It's, a, it's like a one-click thing on GitHub or GitLab and many of these Git repos. One interesting thing that ChatGPT states here is that there is a project called Fluent Search that is open source, but it's it's completely unrelated to Windows desktop app or Windows file searching or so uh, maybe the author of this article when he was looking for licensing information on fluent search he did a search just like I did and he got licensing information about something else because what he's talking about here is definitely not free and open source software so he needs to change this as far as the pricing model it may be free of charge but it's definitely not open source software his next open source app that he'd happily pay for because it's so good is Photo Demon, which I don't know this. This is Windows answer to GIMP. Well, GIMP has a Windows version. You don't need a Windows alternative to GIMP. GIMP works on Windows, Mac, and Linux because I was a GIMP user before I switched to Linux. I was actually using GIMP 20 years ago when I was a Windows user. So I, but hey, that's fine. Maybe Photo Demon is better. I don't know. Is this free and open source software? Because he's already made the mistake. Let's actually ask ChatGPT is Photo Demon open source software? Yes, Photo Demon is open source software licensed under the GPL v3. So that's great. I didn't have to go uh, search a GitHub or anything. So this is free and open source software. Unfortunately, it is Windows only. You see the OS is Windows. Moving on, maybe you'll have some cross-platform stuff. Right now, the only thing that I could have used out of this list was Zen Browsers. was the only thing that had a, uh, a Linux client. Image Glass. I don't think this is going to have a, a Linux client because I've never heard of this either. OS. It's Windows only. Price model. Uh, open source uh, is what he says, uh, but I don't know. We, we better check this one to is... Image Glass open source. Yes, Image Glass is open source software licensed under GPL v3. Uh, it's an image viewer. The great thing about image viewers is there's a million of them out there. And then there's a million open source image viewers out there. So there's a lot of good image viewers on Linux. So if you're looking for good native image viewers on Linux, I mean, I even like the standard like old school uh, FEH, IMV, SXIV, if you're looking for something with a little more pizzazz and more features, I did a video a while back on Nomax. Nomax is a really cool and powerful little image viewer available on Linux for those that are looking for uh, a Linux image viewer. Next up, he talks about Digicam. So this is professional grade photo management. I'm not a photographer. I don't use like photo management kind of tools like Lightroom or anything like that. But Digicam is available on Linux. You can see Digicam with a K. It's one of the KDE programs. And it is cross-platform, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And then finally, he mentions Kaden Live. Kaden Live's fantastic, right? It's the program I use to edit all of my videos. It's the program I'm going to use to edit this video. Kaden Live. 
Caden Live is one of the best pieces of free and open source software on the planet, bar none, and it's one of the reasons why I'm going to make a donation this year to the KDE project, which I often do, because Caden Live is one of those pieces of software that I use on a daily basis that I couldn't live without. And it is cross-platform. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and I've actually used Caden Live on Windows machines before, and it's not bad. If you're looking for a free and open source video editor on Windows, give Caden Live a try. So that's it for this guy's uh, list of the seven open source apps he can't live without, although at least one of them is not open source at all. So, <laughs> But, you know, I, I won't fault him for that. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the open source apps that I can't live with. I'm just going to speak personally. Uh, I mentioned Caden Live. That's always at the top of my list, pretty close. Another one that's usually at the top of my list, OBS. I've donated money to OBS many times in the past. I've uh, donated to their Patreon because OBS is what I use to record the video. What you're looking at right now, uh, OBS is recording my camera. It was recording my desktop just a minute ago. I can't live without OBS. If OBS went away, It'd be really hard for me to do what I do as far as a uh, content creator on YouTube. Uh, a third program that I use on a daily basis every time I make a video, GIMP. GIMP is what I use to create all my thumbnails. It's what I use for pretty much artwork, uh, channel headers. Anytime I need to do something artsy on Linux, I use GIMP for that. And I mentioned earlier, I've been using GIMP even before I was using Linux full-time on the desktop. I switched to Linux full-time on the desktop about uh, like 17, 18 years ago. And I was using GIMP you know, longer than that. I was using GIMP even when I was a Windows XP user back in the day. And it was fantastic because it was free and open source software. And it was pretty good, right? It was like a free and open source alternative to Photoshop or back then, back in the day. I don't know if Photoshop was all that popular 20 years ago 25 years ago it was things like paint shop pro you know other, other pieces of proprietary software that i didn't want to pay for so i gave gimp a try and i've been using gimp for more than 20 years now and i can't live without it so those are some of the projects i'll donate to and i, I encourage you you know sit down and, and think about you know obviously there's hundreds if not thousands of pieces of free and open source software probably on your Linux system, assuming you're a Linux user and you can't donate money to all of them, but think about the things that you really depend on. Because a lot of people will say, well, you know, I would donate money, but I can't donate to everything. I don't have that much money. Well, come up with a dollar amount that you can give and divide it across three to five programs that you really depend on, the things that you really love. Even if it's a, a project, um, maybe it's your distribution, you know, the distribution you're running. The Linux distro is a smaller uh, distribution that really could use some funds, right? Make a donation to your distribution. Make a donation to your desktop environment or your window manager. If you can't live without that particular desktop or window manager, donate to the project. And also don't be afraid to support organizations that fight for you, for your digital freedom, for your digital rights, support organizations like the Free Software Foundation, for example. Anyway, food for thought. Peace, guys.